Hello! I'm Amy Dowd, of course, and if you have been following my blog over on Geek and Sundry Blogs, you know that this week was all about Pride Month and talking about LGBT characters in comics and representation in comics. And I had way too much to say! So part one is posted on Geek and Sundry Blogs, but what you're about to see is all the stuff that I had to chop off because nobody wants to watch 15 minutes straight. <laughs> Please enjoy! Anyway, I think he came around on their decision, and it seems to be working out nicely for North Star and Kyle. But that little boy's reaction is what I think about every time we take these steps forward and back and sideways in the general representation of alternate sexualities in comics. And it hopefully will only continue to be that way because we are even finally starting to see representation in comics designed for all ages. For instance, the absolute most iconic story of teenagers flirting and falling in love ever to be written over 70 years of unchanging teenageness, Archie Comics. They, of course, introduced their first out gay character in the form of Kevin Keller a couple of years back. And to their immense credit, he wasn't a one-off stunt that then disappeared. He has stayed part of the core Archie books since his introduction and gotten to do a lot of really groundbreaking stuff without ever changing the essential nature of Archie comics, which is a bunch of teenagers having teenage issues, but in a relatively polite and safe way in their suburb of Riverdale. We are also seeing some teenage sparks fly in the pages of my recent obsession, Lovebird Janes, which I'm probably going to keep working into every video until they cancel it, because it recently went ongoing. How cool is that? Lumber Janes, of course, is co-written by Noel Stevenson of webcomic fame, who has recently revealed some sexuality quirks to the core cast of her webcomic, Nimona, which is making it even more interesting. And the web, of course, is home to all all kinds of good stuff. The web is pretty much the spiritual successor to the independent comic scene that was started in the form we really know it uh, by Love and Rockets. And amazing work is being done there with all kinds of different human stories being told in comics such as Girls with Slingshots, one of my favorites, Questionable Content has some good queer content in it, all of the works of Erica Moen, of course, and certain long-running ones like Jane's World by Paige Braddock. And the web is actually where I was introduced to one of my favorite comic strips of all time by someone who became one of my favorite authors of all time who wrote probably the best book ever written on the subject of LGBT life. That strip, of course, was language warning Dykes to Watch Out For, which was being serialized online when I first found it in college and has been a long-running alternative newspaper strip by Alison Bechtel, who was chronicling the everyday lives of a large cast of mostly lesbian characters, but with many variations. And the book she would go on to write, of course, is Fun Home, which is her autobiography, which details her coming to terms with her own sexuality and some other family secrets, and I don't want to tell you too many of the details because that book is one of the greatest achievements in comic book or any other kind of literature, and I literally can't recommend it highly enough to anyone. Fun Home by Alison Bechtel. Celebrate Pride Month by putting that one at the top of your list. Now, of course, that is already more than I probably should have tried to stuff into a tiny vlog, but I have barely scratched the surface, I am happy to say, of the things that we could talk about with gay representation in comics, including the many, many examples to be discussed in non-American comics, such as the recent European scene graphic novel Blue is the Warmest Color, which you may have heard of because they made a movie out of it and it made a splash at con. And in the odd current events front, the fact that they are finally going to stream the anime adaptation of Sailor Moon, but without changing the content so they took the lesbians out like they did in 90s American television. Alright, so that really wraps it up for real this time, but there are still a million things I had to leave out. I'm delighted to say that there is much too much good stuff to talk about when it comes to LGBT characters and comics and LGBT creators and people like Northwest Press and The Legend of Bold Riley out there setting great new examples. 
Seriously, I could apparently go on for the entire month straight. Maybe that'll be next year's challenge. Comment in the comments and let me know what you think, how you're celebrating Pride Month, what your favorite example is that I might not have gotten to in either of these videos. And until next time, read yourself some comics.